Okay, but yeah, that's good. Okay. Okay, we're live. Um, all right. We were live, and then we thought we were live, and we weren't. Anyway. Um, hey, everybody. I'm Mitch, and today we're uh, going to do cover FM synthesis. Um, and today, again, our co-hosts, we have Mickey Bones. Hello, everybody. And we have Mike. He's here. Um, hey guys, to everyone. also show off the updates on the patch librarian. Um, there's some really cool things going on with the patch librarian. If you got my email, I actually just used the patch libra librarian to, uh, <laughs> I almost said librarian, um, but I almost used, I just used the patch librarian to, uh, make the diagram for today's, uh, today's patch. So. Um, it's super cool. We're going to take like five minutes and show you the updates on that. And then um, I want to play a couple of people's patches that they submitted. And then we'll get into FM synths. So, and this is kind of, before we start, this is the, uh, this is the FM patch we're going to make today. And it's uh, like a four voice poly synth. Sounds like it maybe is clipping a little bit. It's not my... I think it's YouTube clipping, but, um, so yeah, let's, let's start with, uh, what's new with the librarian, Mike. Sure. Thanks. Uh, yeah. So, uh, thanks Mitch and, and Mickey, uh, for letting me, uh, talk about this for a little bit before our, um, FM stream. Um, so I'll get right into it. So, um, in, in case people don't know, I, I help work on the Zoya librarian, um, patch app. I've worked with, um, a number of um, developers, as well as an uh, intern that worked at uh, Empress um, a couple summers ago. Thanks, John Breton. If you're out here watching, thank you so much again. Um, so I've been sort of taking the reins on developing the app um, and made a pretty big update recently um, to include a, a patch expander so you can sort of see the full routing of things because um, that's been sort of a overarching question people have had, like, how do I visualize a patch? How do I, like, break it down into pieces and be able to recreate it? without sort of like going through each connection. Um, so that's sort of what we're going to talk about, uh, as well as some other updates. So let me share my screen. I can say that every day at work. OK, cool. All right, so Uh, can everyone see it? Are we good? Sorry, I don't want to go back to the other thing and cause like cascading windows. <laughs> yeah, no cascading windows. Looks good. Sweet. All right, sweet. So this is the Zoya Librarian app. I'm running it on a, on, a, on my personal Mac machine. This is version 1.2. Uh, you can find a link to download on uh, my GitHub. Uh, we'll probably put it in the chat. It'll be in the video description and all that good stuff. And it works on Mac, Windows, and uh, Ubuntu machines. Um, so that's really cool. Um, so I'll go very... I'll try to go fast. Basically, uh, the way that this works is it allows you to pull patches from patch storage into your own sort of personal library of patches to organize, as well as ones that you've created. You can uh, import your own creations. You can uh, create new folders um, to put onto your SD card. Uh, and you can sort of organize things in a, in a really sort of like compact way. Um, so it's just meant to be a management tool for your patches and as well as a way to organize them. Uh, so like for instance, if we take a quick look here, um, what I just did is I clicked on a patch made by Christopher um, called Spectra. And what it's actually doing is it's pulling from the patch storage site to pull all the information about the patch. Um, so if you click here, it'll bring you to the patch storage. If you click here, it'll bring to you to Christopher's YouTube page where you can see the patch in action. And then you can see the patch notes. And then you can download that patch. And then if you download it, then it'll show up in your Local storage view. It's both sharing and displaying the app at the same time. We can see uh, new patches in here. Right. So in the local storage view, you have a couple other options. You have a way to visualize the patch as it would look on Zoya's screen. So this is sort of a recreation of the 8x5 grid. And you can scroll to the different pages. You can look at different modules and see, hey, this multi-filter is going to some compressor. Right, which is basically the same view you would get on the Zoya itself, which is really cool. You can sort of like see an offline view of your patches and just get a general 
idea. And there's other some other organizational tools that you can add tags, you can uh, include a rating to like manually sort your patches based on how much you like them or use them, um, that sort of thing. Uh, but the main thing that we're going to be sort of focusing on in this very, again, very, very short window um, is talking about the patch expander. Um, so I'm going to look at one that I particularly like. And you can always search. Uh, the, the search bar allows you to sort of like narrow down your view even further. So I'm going to look at one of mine that I've made, the Abyss Water Patch, uh, which is a stereo uh, shallow water, um, basically. Uh, again, you could see it uh, as on the Zoya screen here. And then if we click expand, it's going to generate a nice big window of connections and modules for those connections. Uh, so generally what it's going to, to display is on the leftmost side is going to be your sort of like sources. So like things like um, control um, value modules, like on a front page that are like knobs as um, as well as like MIDI notes or audio inputs. And then all the way on the right is going to be your output modules um, or other effects processing. And then in between is all the other modules that sort of like um, combine there. So if I zoom in on this, again, sorry, it's, it's gonna be a little slow because I'm both sharing and displaying the app at the same time. So apologies for that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, cool. So you can see here, again, there's a lot going on because it's a complex patch, but you can at least see some general routing of CV here. So like CV, um, so one of the big things about the shallow water is that it uses a random LFO for its um, delay line. So the vibrato section. Um, so you can see the, the random CV going into a few different modules. Um, hitting a multiplier and then eventually making its way to the what I'm using for the vibratos are actually stereo spread model uh, modules. All right, so a stereo spread is the original linear delay line um, before the linear option was added to the delay lines. And then it can go and then it goes further along the auto processing. There's a, there's a pair of filters that it hits. There's a mixer that hits the, uh, the dry and wet blend and then a compressor and then a couple overdrives the distortion before it finally hits the output walk. So we can see all your secrets. You here. can see all the secrets here. You can see every single routing and then it's really good. all these sort of like CV. So like this particular one, right? This is the resonance control. So this resonance control is a knob that I put on the front page or what we normally refer to, refer to as a control page, sort of like making a virtual pedal on your Zoya. This goes out to the four filters Right, it's controlling the, the resonance of those four filters at the same time. Um, so just a really cool tool, um, just for a fun bonus one. <laughs> I'm curious, I actually haven't tested this in a, in a bit, so it might break, but we're going to look at what I think is the most complicated patch <laughs> that exists, um, Christopher's tuner patch. And just click on what that kind of looks like <laughs> from an expanded view. This is seriously a complicated patch. I've never, oh my God, I've never looked yeah, at it. Yeah, this is his tuner patch. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, and there's a couple of different ways you can view things. Wow. Um, yeah, it just, it, it's pretty complex. So if I, it's like stalactites. Yeah, it's, it's pretty wild. And the thing for this is, whoa, sorry, I zoomed in way too much. So like all of these, I'm assuming all of these on the right are the actual physical pixels that show the different letters for the tuner. And then everything else is just CV and just that like logic sense. to get to those blocks. But yeah, you can, you can see Christopher's secrets as well if you have the patience to look through it. Um, so that's my spiel about the librarian. Um, I made some videos on using it. Um, I made a video for the initial launch of V1.1 and version 1.2. You can see them on my YouTube channel. Um, and yeah, that's really it. Um, and as Mitch, as Mitch mentioned, um, the diagram that folks are gonna see, uh, stop screen, a diagram that folks are gonna see for this patch uh, was made using that tool. 
Hey, Mike, um, quick question. Somebody had a, a question in the chat that I think is good. Is there any shortcut keys to, to move around the canvas? Yes. Uh, so if you noticed, I was hitting uh, sometimes where it would show a different sort of like routing or a different like sort of auto layout. So there are a couple of shortcuts that I uh, highlighted in the both in the video and the manual that I made for the app, um, as well as sort of like if you select a group of modules, you can zoom to just that sort of like seven or eight modules. Um, so that might help you sort of like view things a little easier. Um, and if you also, if you right click in that window, uh, the tool itself has a number of shortcuts um, for helping manage it. Yeah, sure, we can put a link down there. Yeah, thanks for the question, I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Mike. I, it's amazing that you, that you put that together. I know you had a little bit of help, but you really spearheaded it. And I know you did it in your free time. And I did. Like, there's, uh, there's a tip jar thing on the GitHub page. So if, uh, you know, you can always tip Mike for, for he doesn't work for Impress actually. He, he just, um, he's really talented. Thank you, Mitch. I appreciate so, that. All, all donations will be going to my personal gear fund. <laughs> <laughs> right to on. buy more zillions. <laughs> cool. Um, all right. Well, I, before we start on FM, a couple people had submitted some patches, and I just wanted to check them out really quick. Um, so, a couple of we got a couple of flangers. This one is Martin's flanger, and it is two delay lines switchable for inline or crossline feedback, and. It's got that, the default setting has that really nice kind of throaty flange that, that sounds really good. Um, so he made this after the, uh, the flanger bootcamp. Sounds great. Uh, it's an awesome patch, Martin. And then next we have an auto art, and this one's cool too. This is, Ethan submitted this one. And it's an, and a like a sub oscillator underneath it. And then yeah, it's pretty neat. Good patch, Ethan. This is cool. Um, I really like seeing what you guys kind of where you took things from the from the boot camp. So thanks for submitting these. And you will get um, you will be made first Zoyan first class, uh, I don't know, sit, not citizens, uh, Zoyan first class members, I think. Um, there you go. Mike's Very got well one. deserved. <laughs> nice, yeah. And um, let's see. Oh, yeah, this one is Douglas's flanger. It's, um, he has a cool twist on it because he's, he, um, set this as a multi-effect basically it's a fl since flangers chorus and um what's up vibrato yeah. are all using modulated delay lines you can switch between them with the stop switch and you have each one which is pretty cool and then also jim you've got a patch too and jim's jim's flanger has a, an envelope filter that opens the VCA, the feedback to the VCA. So, you know, I can play it harder and get a different flange than if I play soft. And it's, that's a, a really kind of nice. I like this sound too. I like I like the subtle flange on the soft stuff. And then if you want to really play hard, that's me playing hard. It's not very hard, but anyway. It sounded like. Um, at, at the beginning, it sounded like it almost had an overdrive at the end of it because you're playing really hard into it. It sounds cool. When you're yeah. Um, so now let's get into FM synthesis. And let's try to not make it confusing if we can. Um, so 
I think I want to start with kind of a rundown of of what FM is before we get into to making a patch. So FM synthesis is frequency modulation synthesis. Um, the it was popularized in the '80s with like the DX7. The Yamaha DX7 was like the big FM synth, and it it was kind of I think it's known for being pretty confusing or intimidating. Um, the the way FM synthesis actually this is interesting. Yamaha had a patent on FM synthesis until 1995, so. FM synthesis was kind of just like, it was just digital FM synthesis, not analog, but it was kind of just at a, it was just Yamaha doing it for like 15 years or something. Um, and then, you know, recently there's been a lot more developments in FM and how you FM things, but it, it can be a little confusing with the terminology as far as carriers modulators, operators, and ratios. Those are the things that I think are confusing about it. And what, so we'll try to break those down into like how they're relevant in the Zoya, because I don't think ratios have tended to confuse me in the past as far as what a ratio means in FM synthesis. And, um, also, the carry, the carry operators, so let's just start with the basic definitions and I'll um, kind of pull up a diagram here. Um, so if we look at the Yamaha DX7 alg algorithms, like this is a lot, of, these are all A1, A2, these are all different algorithms for FM synthesis. And they are pretty confusing if you don't know what, like, Nothing on this diagram's face tells me what anything means. <laughs> like, um, but basically, DX7 was a six operator um, FM synthesis. And operator is just another word for like the sine wave they're using. Um, so, like the the digitone's like four op, is it or it's six op? Four four operators. So it just has four. Um, waveforms that can be connected together to modulate each other. If you're using the Zoya, that isn't really a problem. Like the algorithms here, they you could they could be anything. So with uh, like the DX7 or any other FM synth, you're limited to these algorithms, these connection flows that um, <laughs> that they have um, predefined. Yeah, that, so Zoya doesn't care about that. That being said, we're today I'm going to make a polysynth and I want it to be fairly straightforward. You don't need to do like a six op FM synth for it to sound good, in my opinion. You can, we're just gonna do a three, we'll use three waveforms for each voice. So it's three waveforms, three operator synth. Um, and the if we if I drew out my algorithm like the DX7, it would just look like this. And you can kind of see, maybe I'll I'll move this way. There we go. You can't really see that says carrier. So the bottom wave is the carrier that that's what you call it. It's just the waveform that carries sound out. It's the outputting waveform. And above it we have two modulators. Um, this top modulator is going to feed back into itself. So the FM, the output of that mo that waveform is going to go back into itself and modulate itself, and then it's going up onto another waveform that then hits the carrier wave. And that's that's uh, basically what we'll do today. And then we can experiment with maybe some other algorithms if we have time. Like creating these different algorithms is fairly easy when you know what they mean. Um, if you look at like A1, one and three are, are the carriers. Those are the waves that are outputting sound. For example, A31, one through six, they're all outputting sound. So, but back up to A1, we have 
waveform, uh, you'd say modulator number two is, mo is going into the FM input of number one. And then on the other side, you have three modulators going into each other into number three. Six is feeding back into itself before it goes into five. And also these are gonna have, you know, envelopes um, to, to control how they, uh, how they affect each other and how they modulate each other. So really FM synthes synthesis is just like modulating a bunch of waveforms, traditionally sine waves. And uh, then they don't have to be sine waves though, but yeah, they are. They are traditionally. And it can be easier to modulate them. And then real quick, we'll go into ratios. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on ratios because basically when you modulate an FM synth, they're really good at things like bell tones um, because you can get these harm inharmonic kind of sounds that sound a little more organic. Um, and they, they, um, those are usually made by adding some sounds that aren't some modulators or sine waves that aren't corresponding to the carrier waves harmonic frequency. So they're not in the same series or you can think of it, they're not in the same key maybe, um, where the easiest way to get um, like harmonically um, like pleasing tones is to do like octaves um, or, or fifths or stay within the harmonic series to when you modulate. And we'll get into this. I'll kind of show you a quick example of what I mean on the Zoya. Um, let's click a, an audio module oscillator, waveform, sine, and FM on. So, and then I'm gonna have an, I need a different patch because that one's pretty full. Um, but Mike, did you have something you wanted to to add? Sorry. Yeah, I mean, you know, as 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 far as um, FM synthesis goes, like we see these super complex diagrams, and it can be pretty intimidating. But the one nice thing about the Zoya is there's so much visual feedback you can really kind of see what's going on. And especially with Mike's librarian app, um, I think it's a really, you know, intuitive way to, to approach FM synthesis. If you look at the DX7, it's so hard to know what's going on under the hood. And I know for a while they were even selling um, like these like uh, add-on kind of things with faders on them. So you could customize the algorithms and, and you know, similarly, these days the the Korg Volca FM is pretty popular and, and it's it's pretty difficult to program those things. So I think that's one thing that the Zoya really has going for it here. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I um and yeah we can we'll kind of make something different than you would get with uh today we're gonna make something different than you would get with like your basic um FM. And sorry I I said, Mike, did you have something to say? And I saw you both looked at me or like looked. And so I'll try yeah. to. Oh, that's funny. But also, I'll start, I'll call you by your real name, Mickey Bones. Yeah, and then I'll call Mike Mickey, Mike. call me by my full name, please. Mickey Bones. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't have um, a dad, but <laughs> keep going. Yeah, cool. Okay. Yeah. So just. To give you a quick example, I've added to an oscillator here and a, a VCA, and we'll just hear what a sine, sine wave at. Yeah, and Christopher added like get off semitones semi if you want nastiness, which is a good point. Um, so if you want really gritty, interesting kind of tones, yeah, just like detune it. Um, so there's a Um, E3, and that's just a sine wave. And if we kind of put, and I've got 
both oscillators tuned to E3, and I'm going to plug the output of the first oscillator, this would be my modulator, into my second oscillator's input. Um, and you can hear it's um, changed the pitch um, or the frequency. Um, and as I go up, it's modulating that kind of higher. And then if I I change this to a frequency that's unrelated, that's um, you know, not even a semi related by a semitone. Um, you get kind of too loud. <laughs> you get um, kind of more texture and grit and uh, different like odd order harmonics. I think that bring out the, the kind of character. That kind of sounds like a Taco Bell tone. <laughs> they use a DX7 for that. I have no idea, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. But I I wonder if they do actually. They, they probably use something similar. I don't know. But yeah, that that's like the very. I would say that's the basics of FM. I don't know um, if if you have any questions um, just before we get started patching. Um, on on FM. And let's get into it, man. Yeah, let's do okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Let's I'm gonna load up an empty patch. So we're gonna do a polysynth today. And I've got a I'm gonna hook it up to MIDI today. And I'm using a um launch key. Launch key mini. This this is a launch key mini. It's uh the reason I like this is because I can just connect it with, I've just got a patch cable. Um, and I'm connecting it to the MIDI output of the launch key. And it's going into the Zoya's MIDI input up here. So um, it's really easy. I also like the, the Keyset Pro um, as a, uh, can the Zoya truly be detuned? Um, sorry. Yeah, so it it can't be, I guess, not in a global setting. Um, it um, it can be detuned just manually, kind of like it can be offset more than detuned. I would say so. You can offset the tuning of anything on the Zoya. You couldn't like um, tune it to four forty. I, with like a, um, what do you, with like a global option, but you could do it by offsetting everything. I think I've never wanted to do. Um, I've never tried, but yeah. So probably not, no. And then the FM, how, Jim wants to know like, how does the FM input and the oscillator combine? Um, good question. I'll get into that more now. So I'll zoom in here on my Zoya. And this there, that was kind of throw that light was throwing off the camera. So now I've got to just focus it real quick. There we go. Um, and yeah, let's get started on this FM polysynth. I'm going to, what I'm going to do is make a voice on one page. And then I'm going to copy that to, to two other pages because, um, so as I'm making it, I'm trying to cram a lot into one page because this is the easiest way to, um, or the fastest way to make like a polysynth would be to copy the page with, with the whole voice on it. So I'll start with a, I'm going to start with my carrier, my um, my module that's outputting so sound. So I'm going to place that down here, um, oscillator, sine wave, and then FM input. I'm going to turn that on. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to patch up a synth like any normal synth is what I would start with. So I'm going to add a VCA. 
And then I'm going to add an ADSR, an envelope. And I'm going a little faster today because um, we have done, we've kind of been through this in the last few, but if you have any questions on how I'm patching it, just feel free to, to let me know and we can slow down or um, we can, yeah, get into any, any aspect of this. So there's my ADSR oscillator in VCA. And I want to output that to, I'm going to add some effects because I know I have enough space in here to actually get a whole reverb out of it. Um, so I'm going to add that now. And I'm going to add a filter because FM frequencies um, always, you know, you're modulating usually up in the ratio. You can modulate down. Um, you get a lot of um, high end that can be kind of harsh. So I like to add um, a low pass filter on on my um, on my FM synths and. I'm going to use the state variable filter in low pass mode. And I'm going to add an audio output. Interface modules, audio output. And I want some, actually, I'm going to edit that shift plus the pencil. And that's an audio input. That's an input. Thanks. I was like, where's the gain control? I need gain control. So the audio output has gain control. Um, and I'm going to turn that. I know with, with since it's um, a little, a little louder. So I want some kind of final control so I don't clip YouTube on the game. So now the last thing I want to do to just have my basic synth is I'm going to going to connect this to MIDI to this keyboard. Um, and let's see, uh, um, interface modules, again, interface, it, it would be under interface because the MIDI ports are interfacing with the Zoya. Um, MIDI note in, MIDI channel, I know it's channel one. And for now, I just want one output, but since I know I'm going to add two more voices, I'm going to set this to three outputs. And click Done. And just the first one, now I'm going to connect this all up that I have it patched. So the MIDI note in, I'm going to go to the oscillator input. The gate out, I'm going to go to my ADSR in. So the ADSR in is connected to the MIDI gate out. The note out is connected to the oscillator input. The ADSR is going to open the VCA level control. So I'm going to press the ADSR output and the VCA level control. And then now the audio, the oscillator audio output to the VCA in, VCA in to my filter filter to my hall reverb and then hall reverb to my audio out. And now I should have, if I patched it up right, I should have a sine wave. It's pretty quiet. I think the filter is closed all the way. You're right. It is. Thanks. <laughs> there we go. And Yeah, so now we have a sine wave. Not super interesting as far as um, a patch. I mean, it's pleasant enough. I, I, it's not, anything sounds good with reverb, actually. So, um, but yeah, that's that's it. It's super basic. And like F, now we're going to get into the FM part, which is really how you get some complex waves, some cl complex um, timbre without like, a whole lot of 
um, DSP really, or like it's cheap, it's cheaper than doing like additive synth where you have a hundred partials or something, you know? Um, and that's why they used it in like, in the Sega Genesis, I think had a, had an FM chip in it. So like all those Sega Genesis sounds were FM because they could make a whole lot more waveforms with just like, yeah, some, a chip that was relatively easy to i didn't know that sonic the hedgehog was my childhood yeah that's that's all fm (laughs) that's so cool there are some synths that use that chip now i've seen that there's like yeah there's like sega synths weird kind of small run sega synths i've seen that yeah it's pretty cool i i kind of want to go back and like i don't know play play sega genesis just for the music (laughs) Because um, I remember it being better than than Nintendo as far as the music, but not, never really caring why. Uh, but yeah, so now the FM part, which would be the frequency modulation. This is, again, this is the carrier wave, and it's got an FM input in the middle of it. So it's got an input, output, FM. And I want to make, I want, like, let's go back to our di- diagram of what I'm going to do here. So I've got the carrier and that is the carrier is going, is already connected. It's going out. That's that sine wave. But then we've got these two modulators and one's feeding back into itself here. And I'm going to patch those up now. So first, the first modulator is going to be a sine wave again. Audio modules, oscillator. I'm just going to put, I'm going to place them and then I'll patch everything up again. Well, actually, I'll just place, I'll start with one at a time so you can kind of hear the difference. Audio modules, oscillator, sine wave, FM in, on. And now we've got that. And we're going to, I'm going to put an envelope and a VCA on there to, to control how the um, how the modulation occurs or how fast, and the amount of uh, frequency modulation applied to the carrier wave. So I'm going to add a VCA, and then I'm going to add. You know what? With this one, with my example patch, I didn't do a VCA. I did a, an LFO on this part. So control modules LFO. And I just added a square wave to the to the level control. And then I'm going to patch the oscillator audio out into the VCA. And instead of going outputting sound, this VCA, and you'll see it's kind of doing like this tremolo thing, is now going to go into the FM input of this, this carrier wave. And now we have this sound. And it's kind of static, or it's, you know, it's not really moving because I haven't connected the oscillator um, frequency to my MIDI note. So I need to go back over here. MIDI note in is going to go into this oscillator. Now it's connected to both oscillators. And you have that kind of tremolo beep kind of thing that's a, that I like. And if I disconnect this and I just open this level control, you could control, you know, the VCA could control the amount of FM, FMing that this, this carry, this modulator is doing to the carrier wave. So, you know, now it's just a little bit. And if we open it up, you hear, but it's not doing a whole lot, this one because it's the same note. So this is a one-to-one ratio where it's uh, the FM, you know, it's mild because it's this, the notes are parallel, or they're the same. So if I pitch this up an octave, I'm gonna get a different tone. And you know, like we were saying earlier, if I just change the frequency to something, 
in harm in harmonic you get this kind of organic kind of or um you know you can imitate different um like the attack of a bow or on a violin or things like that. Um, so yeah, I am going to set this one. Let me check and see. I'm actually gonna check because I wanna make the same patch this time. What I set the ratio to on this one. So, I think okay, so I set the first one to a to a fifth. Um, that was number thirty six. I did save. All right, it's always always risky. Um, so where were we here? A zero. A fifth. Uh, so then we we get. That's what we get there. Sounds cool. Now I'm going to connect that LFO again because I want the beeping. But I've got to close it to open and close it. Or I could have connected it. Um, an inverter. So that's the first modulator. And I want to add one more modulator. But this time, I'm going to feed it back into itself. So control modules. Let's see, oscillator. Done. And let's add a VCA. So I'm adding an oscillator, another VCA, and another um, ADSR. And I'm turning the sustain off. I just want attack and decay. Simple. I'm going to connect that to my. Oops, not my node out. I'll delete that connection. So my gate out. And then again, the MIDI note in, I want to go into the pitch of this oscillator. I want this to go like two octaves up. So, so I just, to, to do that, I bias this um, oscillator by selecting the oscillator frequency and then moving it. It was at C4, I'm gonna move it up to C6. And then I connect this ADSR output to my VCA level control in. And then this level control out for this first modulator is going into the second modulator. And then it's going to feed back into itself, into its own FM input. And I didn't, well, I didn't set it to FM. So quickly edit this that modulator, hit shift plus edit, FMN on. And now it has an FM input there and I can connect this VCA out back into the FM input. And, and there's our, there's our, our patch. I think it's, yeah, it should be working. And we could pitch it up. We can pitch it up and come through here. Yeah, it's pretty high. It's a little too high. Going back down to, to two octaves up. You can hear probably that the, if I open the filter more, you can kind of hear those kind of ringing high end tones, but yeah. Um, Yeah, so that's um, that's an FM synth patch. Um, it looks like Christopher's already answered most of the questions, so I I don't think um, yeah. Great tips and tricks. <laughs> yeah. Could what's be done uh, across two screens be done across two Euro bureaus? Um, not really. Um, I don't think they, they don't really communicate like 
you can't really put two together and have one more power powerful i mean i find two useful but not not as far as like patching one mega patch usually it's just like two separate patches um so yeah um and let's make this polyphonic so what i would do to make this polyphonic is just copy this um this patch um so I'm going to go to page zero um, and I'm going to hit shift plus copy. And I'm going to copy this page with all my synth voice after this, this effect page. And Hit save to make sure it copies. And I'm going to copy it twice to have three voices. Hit shift plus copy and save. And now we have three voices. The second two are not hooked up. So this will take me a second. Basically, I just have to patch these two outputs, MIDI note in and gate out to the um, the second and the first and second output. Um, and yeah, let's let's do that. Do you guys have anything to add here? Because I'm just gonna patch this up. Um, I don't think we need to like review it too much because it's just connecting. Um, I just need to make sure the oscillators are connected to the gate ends and the the um, the or the ADSRs are connected to the gate ends and the oscillators are connected to the MIDI node out. Um, and I want to connect all all of them. Sure. I've got um, a question for you, Mike, if that's okay. I was wondering, you know, you just talking before doing this live stream, you've experimented with different FM synthesizers and stuff. I wondered what you thought the experience was like doing this sort of stuff on the Zoya as opposed to other hardware synthesizers you've used and how the workflow differs. Sure. Um, yeah. So I've had a couple of FM, I've had a Digitone. Um, I currently still have a Hydrosynth as sort of my main sort of like synthesizer and they both have FM, um, but they're both sort of like constructed in a way that it, it's kind of like guardrails around the FM where you can do these tones, but it doesn't allow you to like create your own sort of like algorithm or create your own sort of like, you know, weird routing around how the FM works. Um, so when approaching it on Zoya, it's much more flexible because you can, you know, create as many modulators as you want and it's just start like creating crazy tones or you can make your own sort of envelopes, uh, envelopes being sort of like the most important part about this. Um, Cause like generally, operators all share the same envelope like on the dx7 or on the hydra or the D or the or the digital they're all a single envelope controlling that um that f that amount um so when you have more flexibility on you know you can have envelope a controlling the, the relationship between uh these two modulators but you have a completely different envelope for the next next stage and that completely changes how the fm is going to sound over time um, so that's going to really affect things. Um, so I, I find that really powerful um, uh, in patching and making some like really, you know, wild out there sounds that you wouldn't expect from, you know, when when you originally think of FM and as someone who has used it before, it's like, oh, it's linear FM. It's like pretty straightforward. There's a bunch of algorithms I can use. But when you push it on Zoya, it's like, wait, there's like so so much larger of a world to explore because you have that flexibility to add your own envelopes. For each yeah. Stage. I mean, my, my experience is mainly with analog FM, which is far more limited. And I, I've got an OP1 and the FM since on there just, you know, it's it's hard to know what's going on. You just kind of twiddle knobs until it sounds good. <laughs> yeah. So I appreciate that insight. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. So uh, thanks. Thanks, Mike um, and Mickey. 
Um, so that's Mr. Bones to you. Yeah, yeah. I almost called him Michael too, and I'm like, I'd have it. Um, so a- any any M names is probably appropriate. <laughs> yeah, Max, Mark, whatever. Um, yeah. So to to actually go to to speak on your point of um, of what of like how the envelopes on like the digitone you you just get one this patch does have like that's how i designed this patch and i wanted to change that's one thing i wanted to change is the attack time my headphones went dead so okay i've got more um so oh that they, it does work. Okay, I wasn't aware about that on the DX7, but I know the Digitone is limited in your ADSRs. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, so um, basically, yeah, this patch does, for each voice, I did change kind of the attack and decay of the envelopes for each different um, each different voice. So like the first one, let's see. I'll, and Jim, to ooh, that's not to answer your question. This LFO is at like 250 BPMs, and I changed them. Excuse me. Um, I changed each one to be slightly different, so you get like when you play three, three chords or three notes. When you play a chord, you get different kind of different tremolo effects for each one. So, yeah. And I kind of like to like have the third one. My example had just like a plucky option for the third synth, which is kind of fun. So I have two kind of And the third song. No. Oh, you know what? I didn't connect them. So the VCA outs, I need to make sure they're in the audio filter. They're going into the audio filter. Now I can see the VCA out there is lit up, it's lit up. And I can see that one's lit up. The easiest way to check this basically would be click on my audio filter input and page. And I can see that VCA is lit up now, this one's lit up and this one's lit up. So I know they're all connected. And I could do this, I could check this also on the MIDI nodes. So those are lit up, this one's not. So now that should be all connected. And this one, those three are lit up. And those three are lit up. So it should, should work. Yeah, now I get that kind of plucky, plucky thing. But I liked, um, I kind of liked how I had this one set up more, which is my original, uh, my original example patch. And I've got, this has four voices instead of three. And the last one has a, like the plucky kind of bell tone. Um, and you can see. You can see that VCA open up there. That's my, that's my bell. Um, and yeah, that that's pretty much the patch. I wanted to kind of experiment with like what else we could do with it, um, or like how we could make it more crazy, maybe. Um, Out of curiosity, what DSP is that one at? It's at a hundred. This uh, is like, well, not a hundred. Yeah, it's like right at a hundred. Ninety-eight. Yeah. It's it's using so four oscillators or four voices, um, a hall reverb, and a filter. So I'm I'm getting a lot out of it. If what I would do if I wanted to experiment more is probably just like delete this uh, this fourth voice. So just like delete it 
delete that whole page. Now I'm at 80%. I still have a three, uh, three voice synth. And just to go over the settings really quick here, um, I've got my ADSR that's controlling the, the feedback wave. Um, that's set at one millisecond. So fast attack, long decay, two, two, uh, two second decay. And then my carrier wave is, you know, it's, it's slowly coming in. It's 50, um, 523 milliseconds for attack. And then it has a two second decay. And yeah, there's, there's no point in DSP if you're not using it exactly. <laughs> um, Gotta use so, every ounce up to 105. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can push it to 105. I I uh, I like to just be conservative and use a hundred, like stop at 100 to be to play it safe. Does so, it ever does it ever get get glitchy or weird on you when you push it up? I've never pushed it up to 105. I didn't know it could go that far. If you go beyond 105, it, you start hearing like digital clipping and pops okay. and stuff. Okay. So don't do that. And also okay. it'll show on the um, the LEDs, it'll go yellow. Yeah. The bypass LEDs. Yeah. So you'll know that it's starting to reach that point. Oh, wow. Yeah. I've always just held back. Never, never, never pushed the bar that far. That's cool. <laughs> Christopher <laughs> knows all about that, that struggle. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he's optimizing quite a bit. Yeah. 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 So... What, um, what do I want to add to this batch? Um, I think I just want to add more oscillators. I want to FM, more, FM it more and make it, you know, they don't have to be sine waves as well. You can, I find that sine waves sound the best, but I could change this to like a square wave. And then, sounds cool. Go for it, Christopher. Give me a crazy suggestion. Normally, I have more uh, craziness ideas, but today I'm the one I was going to throw out was a uh, distortion. So, adding a distortion at the end, uh, probably after the filter before the reverb. Oh, you know what I like to add is okay. I'll add that too, but I like to add noise. Oh yeah. Um. Especially with FMs, kind of to give it like, I like to FM the noise too. So I don't have to, um, um, audio modules, where's noise? It's towards the bottom, I think. Yeah, there it is. Um, that blends in. I'm going to edit it. Let's have a green noise. Green noise. Um, so I don't actually have to, yeah, you could do delays in the feedback. That's a great idea, Martin. Um, so control modules, audio modules, delay line, um, and then what I want to do is connect this noise to this like tremolo sounding, uh, FM, um, and you you'll hear a lot of noise. If I, I probably put another VCA on there, but for for just for now, I'm just going to hit the noise and the VCA and turn down the connection strength. And have, um, and then I want to feed that into this delay line. And this delay line is, I'm going to feed that into the FM of oscillate, the feedback FM. Now I'll feed it into the second modulator. So the FM input on oscillator number two is going from this delay line. And I get some weird kind of, some more noise, I don't know. It's kind of cool. 
and then I'm gonna slow it down though. You know, I would... I'm gonna try Christopher's suggestion next, but I think I want to... Um, yeah, use an untracked mod oscillator as a modulator. Um, so maybe I want the tremolo to invert when the noise, I want the noise to be inverted from the modulation. So I'm going to delete that connection. Um, I'm running out of space on this page. I'm going to put it on a separate page. I'm going to put my, so I'm going to hit shift plus move, move my noise. I'm going to add an audio module VCA. And this time I'm going to use the same LFO. I'm still hearing the noise. I'll just delete that there. Um, it's not connected to anything. So the noise hit shift plus the eyeball to see the connections as well. If you if you don't if you don't know that one, it's super handy. Um, so the noise is going into this VCA, and this I'm going to now invert this LFO. So I'm going to hit audio module. Control module, CV invert, and that will flip. Um, and now it's going zero to one, zero, uh, negative one to one. So it flips that um, that LFO, and then I'm going to invert this VCA. So it should be the opposite of this one, and then I will also send that out. I will also send this noise that's inverted to my carrier wave FM. So I'm connecting that VCA to the carrier wave input. So at some when when it, the LFO is high and I'm getting the frequency modulations passing through, I'm not getting noise. And then the noise is coming when the let's see how it sounds when the uh, um, frequency frequency modulation isn't. Yeah, sounds cool. Yeah. It doesn't sound as cool as I thought it would. <laughs> Go ahead. Sense. Whatever. And you got to reuse <laughs> the, the same idea as the, the first boot camp with the, the tremolo, the inverted. It, it is the same. Yeah, yeah, it's coming back to the, the tremolo idea. And yeah. you can, yeah, you can apply effects, you know, to to your FM in, in a way. You couldn't do that on, like, another FM synth. Maybe because it doesn't sound good. <laughs> Um, but I don't know what, like, what if I fa like had a phaser? Um, well, at that point you're and, changing the harmonics. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. It just kind of like That's another fine. layer of FM going into the modulation, which can <laughs> but, sound cool. But I thought the noise phased might sound cool. Sounds okay. It works. It sounds nice. Little little ocean waves coming into your patch. Yeah. Now you got now you just gotta pan it. Right. It's a panner. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it, it could just go it's endless. It could just never stop. Um I, I do wanna to um um let's just try Christopher's idea of uh I'm going to delete the um, frequency, the MIDI connection on my modulator oscillator. And then also on both, actually I'm gonna do it for both of them on this voice. So there's, I can just tune these oscillators to basically whatever. And this is a good way, this is great for like sound design when you wanna like try to mimic a different kind of, I'm gonna delete the noise now. I think we're done with that. Um, you know, you could get, I'm also going to open this up because I don't want the VCA. You could, you know, find, that's kind of, I like, I like that. Kind of, it almost sounds a little formatty. And, uh, yeah, that's cool.
And you can really just tweak the notes and find find something. Also, if you click, press down on the encoder and you get to the frequency stage here, you can hit shift plus the encoder for fine tuning. So I can make little little changes here and there. But yeah, I, I don't know if that, that was, um, I think that was what Christopher's suggestion was. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, I think we'll just have to, uh, we'll have to try for, try for Max Crazy now. I'm not going to spend, actually, if, if you have any more questions, uh, let me know. What, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to spend very much time on uh, on Max Crazy. I'm just going to uh, um, I'm going to tweak this like I like this. I'm happy with this patch but I want to see if I can if I can make it really weird um, by just experimenting with the connections that are already here. Like what if I patch this into this like what if I patch the oscillator the modulators feedback into everything um, and just make crazy, like, I, I don't even know what I would do, actually. I'm just going to make a bunch of crazy connections and push buttons and see what, um, you could, what you could really roll the dice with the random thing. I forgot there's a random. I've never. You got to be careful with that, though. <laughs> This is the penultimate Max oh Crazy right here, Mitch. Uh oh, it's already like playing, and I, <laughs> I haven't even hit any notes. I would just double check the output level before anything happens. Thanks. Yeah, I'm gonna turn this way down. Okay, this is definitely Max Crazy. Great idea with the random. <laughs> I'm gonna turn it. It's just, it's like it's a, uh, it's like a dog whistle yeah. or something. It's like so high, I can't, seriously, I can barely hear it, but there's something going on yeah. that didn't work at all. So Random. Uh, I think it's like, there's some frequencies that like, just at the edge of human hearing. Especially yeah, it must be like, like 16, 16, 16 kilohertz or, or something. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's. That's something you could do. Um, well, I, ho I hope everyone's dogs are okay at home. Yeah, really. Oh, I wasn't even undoing. I was just pushing random. So what? there's a random option. Um, can you, you undo the random the though? I, I didn't actually know if you could. Oh, do, can you? Oh, I think so. Let's see. I the undo is like it, it's so new. <laughs> yeah, I can't actually hear anything. Um, what no, I, I test my hearing, Christopher. <laughs> I can still hear 16k. I think. <laughs> oh, oh, it's so loud. No, I can't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's because it's way down. No, there's a lower frequency. It's filled like yeah, that's kind of cool. Oh, all right. But there's definitely some high pitched stuff in yeah. there that yeah, there I is. am there hearing. Is a lot. Like... <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's the max crazy. Um, yeah, I think I think we answered all the questions. Um, no, we got some. Is there a way to key my? The mini note module. Yeah, so. I'm actually normally a guitarist too. So I rarely, I rarely use the keyboard. But, um, so actually Mike, what, what's your, how would you do this here? So the, the mini note module offers a velocity output 
Oh, yeah, right. As an optional thing that you can add. So that'll track the velocity of your keyboard playing, and then you could hook that up to your VCA level. So uh, if you want to use that for your, uh, instead of an AV star or something. Right. Right. So that's the, that's the velocity. And you could, yeah, you could like slew it or something too. Yeah. So it would smoothly. Um, Christopher's got the diagram. There it is. Right. The, the routing. There you go. Yeah, so that way you that that lets you do both the ADSR and the and the velocity of your right, right. Your playing. Cool. I'm just gonna check and see if I think that was it. Next week, I think I'll be pretty fun. Um, I'm excited about that one. I I think we got through everything I wanted to say about um, about FM in. Uh, in in today so i thought this was gonna going to be like the longest one you can tell uh we're getting the hang of this now mitch yeah yeah <laughs> right um so next week uh we'll do smeared repeats if you make an fm synth and want to send it to me uh please do and i'll i'll check it out next week and we'll play with it and um have fun so, yeah. Um, oh, so pulse width. Yeah, so you can you can modulate. Um, I'll just show you real quick. If I add an oscillator here, there's an option for duty cycle. So that would be the that would modulate the pulse width. Um, duty cycle and pulse width are um, are the same thing basically. Um, and it's set at 50%, so you can modulate it either either way. So I've never Do you usually bias pulse. it, or or do you hit it with like a bipolar usually CV? Usually bipolar. Yeah. 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 Um, I would hit it with a... And you don't want it to go all the way to the ends. No. You want to keep it you know, within yeah. like 10 to 90% or something. So since you can't really see the... The wave shape doesn't really really change. Um, I'm just going to quit making this FM. So this is no longer an FM synth. It's just a just a sine wave, and it's um, that's the pulse width that's being modulated now. So by that LFO, and you can hear. Da, 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 da. Yeah, that's. That's a uh, that's pulse width modulation. If I change this LFO to a sine wave and then modulated it a little more drastically, let's make it bipolar because we want to go both directions. So negative one to one. And that's a little bit fast. Still too fast. Center. There you yeah. go. And that's that's. Oh, those, the, I, only that one voice is. <laughs> um, and then let's try to make that, let's add our FM into the pulse width, with the pulse width. That's kind of cool. Um, now you have a, like, uh, pulse width FM synth. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. I've never tried that before. But actually, I think I prefer it without the FM. And if you did like a square, I like square waves modulated. Yeah. Let's see. That's a square That's wave impossible. modulated with yeah. pulse width. And it sounds like the kind of thing. Yeah, it sounds good. I like it. Um, and yeah, I'll. Um, let me know if there's any more questions. And if you have any questions for next week, just um, shoot us an email and I'll be happy to to address it on the show or the boot camp. <laughs> the show. And the show. It's kind of a show. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a weekly show at this point. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> you guys have anything else to add? Check out the library. It's awesome. 
Yeah. 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 Let me know if it breaks. <laughs> <laughs> How do you yeah, submit you, a bug you guys report? Did a, you did a great job with that. It's, uh, Thank you. What, what you guys have added to the Zoya community, it's pretty amazing to see this uh, just collective of enthusiastic people so thank you so much for your work absolutely uh and to answer uh, mitch's thing yeah there's a bug report um template on github uh, same place right right next to the tip jar right next to the tip jar (laughs) (laughs) Um, so yeah the uh the is it linked in the i'll add the library librarian librarian i'll add the librarian to uh link to the github in uh the comments at the end of this cool so so people can find it yeah. do you have any other updates planned for it uh do, yes you... i have um basically i want to try and i have a couple of the features that i want to add to the expander view um so like think showing things like options that you select uh like the wave shape of an oscillator or the wave of an lfo or something like that um, and then hopefully at some point in the future, we'll, uh, get some editing in there. So, uh, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> cool. That's awesome. That'd be so cool to see the, the wave shapes. Yeah. 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 Nice. Um, right on. So is the, is the art patch on patch storage? Um, the one that, the one that was user submitted. I think, did Ethan do that one? I think that's what they're Um, talking about. Yeah, Uh, it was, I I don't know if it's on patch storage. What is it called? It's called auto ARP, if it is. Um, I'll I'll ask him. Um, Oh, there he is. Okay. No. So. um, I'll download that too, that sounded great. Yeah, it was a really cool patch. Um, it was it was nice to hear Taylor's patches, his uh, synth patches too. Um, yeah. the, his first one was really it's that's how it goes though. You like make a cool patch and then you're like, I'm gonna make that patch, and then it doesn't sound as good live when you make it, or at least that's how it goes for me. Like. Uh, because I spent time, a bunch of time tweaking the settings, like on this one, you know, and like. Yeah. I think you got you got close this time, though. Like yeah. your your live patch was pretty close to your yeah. You're example in the ball patch. Part. As long as it was close, <laughs> same general idea. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. I think I I think one thing we could have done that. I would have liked to do is just like pick one of these algorithms and made it made a patch with it. Um, so, but I, I think like what we have next time maybe. I think what we have broken down is to make the the diagrams actually readable. Okay. And yeah. you like say like like you're saying like I don't know a fifteen is relatively complex, but you know knowing how modulators feed into carriers and what's actually being output, you know that one's they're all pretty straightforward once you actually understand like what's happening yeah. they are they i don't know does it i don't know why they designed them that way though <sighs> like okay. why did, is was that just the easiest way to display it on like because you only had like the panel on this on the synth and it's like how can i squeeze all this information i think the display into... definitely came from that the actual choices behind them i think chowning like i don't know i feel like he just like came up with some like weird like mathematical relationships and was like this will probably sound cool if you arrange it this way i don't know yeah hard to say it's too bad the aesthetic stuck too because like that's kind of what all fm patches look like yeah right. yeah i think i just feel like they're yeah they, it never changed and i feel like there's got to be there's got to be a better way to get that information across besides yeah. it Maybe not. I mean, it's simple. As it's simple, like, but just like, it, I don't know. It takes a while. Yeah. yeah. Um, cool. All right, guys. Well, I think I think I'm. We can can sign off here. Um, 
Cool. But are they okay? So Martin says oh, all the algorithm, the algorithms are all the possible connections of six. Yeah, that six. makes sense. That does make sense. <laughs> okay, interesting. So I feel like okay. Hmm. Is that including feedback? I don't think so. I, yeah, I don't all? think. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think that. including feedback because then you you could you can feedback all of them. <laughs> Yeah, right. that, that, that would crazy, get, that could crazy go with infinitely. But as infinite. far as how they're lined up, like if you don't consider like the like six, like if you put the one, sorry, on like a twenty four, that would you wouldn't like put the three where the six is and call it a different algorithm, you know? Right, right. So oh, it, yeah. it's it's with replace without replacement, right? Yeah, yeah. that's a good point. Cool. All right. Well, T-I-L. Yeah. <laughs> cool. well, yeah. Thanks everybody for, for tuning in. I hope, uh, hope to see you next week and, um, yeah. So, Take so care. Yeah. thanks Thank for having me Mike. again. See ya. Yeah, thanks. Thanks Mike. Thanks. Yeah, Mickey nice, nice meeting you, Mike. You as well. <laughs> yep. Later.